We're here at the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference 2014 in Busan in the Republic of Korea, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Professor Alain Moussa, who is Minister of Telecommunications and Information Technology of Palestine. Professor Moussa, you're very welcome to the studio today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much, indeed. And actually, it's my pleasure being to Korea and to being to this uh, conference. I'd like to start off talking about the Plenipotentiary Conference uh, here. Uh, we're now in the third week of the Plenipotentiary Conference. It's been quite a, a marathon. And uh, I know that you arrived relatively recently, but what are your impressions of it? Uh, actually, it is really a marathon, and it's very important. And you know, people, interested people, are waiting for this conference for every four years. So uh, it is very important, and I have seen here that Although I am recently, I have recently arrived to Korea, but I have seen that it is a very good one, very organized one, and the topics are uh, presented in a well-organized manner. And actually, the way that it is organized or uh, things are going smoothly so far, so people are cooperating, and this is very important because I assume this will resolve any misunderstanding or whatever. So, so far, I am happy with the, the, the way that this conference is, uh, is moving. I know there's a great uh, attempt to achieve consensus here, and obviously that's important. Definitely, you know, because ITU, I mean, this specific conference, which is, which is conducted every four uh, years, so people are waiting uh, huge issues to come out of this uh, conference. So consistency should, should be there, and uh, agreement should be there, and resolutions should be there, because people are waiting for such issues. It will help them in the future. It will help them at least for the coming uh, four years. Yeah. This has been referred to as the Olympics of ICTs, and as you so rightly say, it's every four years. What are the priorities for Palestine in the next four years? Well, talking about Palestine, actually, you know, because this ITU is dealing, or this conference is dealing about the global, and so it is dealing also with the individual uh, entities, and Palestine being part of this uh, ITU, uh, we care a lot to know the, the, the regulations and the guidelines of ITU, and the policies of ITU and the direction that ITU is going. And so we are trying to reflect that on our society. However, the case in Palestine is not that uh, simple, you know, due to the complications that everybody knows in there. So in Palestine, we are trying to match globally what is going around with our limited resources, the very limited resources. Accordingly, recently we have to develop our policies and the strategies for the ICTs. The government and the private sector are going to work closer with each other, you know, because the government has a role, the private sector has a role. But when it comes to the private sector, then this is something very important for us and we need to, to develop the private sector. But we need to make the life easier for the private sector in, in the sense that we draw down the policies, the strategies that they have to follow. Otherwise, there will be sort of uh, misunderstanding or whatever. So the first issue in Palestine is to make the policies and the strategies of ICT in Palestine clear for any, everyone. Accordingly, this will help us to develop the sector, and this will be reflected on the human being over there. It will, uh, it will help people to find jobs, it will help people to develop their uh, careers and their jobs, even enterprises. And the issue that we are working on right now is to work not only locally, but to introduce the Palestinians to the rest of the world. Because we Palestinians, we do not have uh, natural resources, but we have the humankind, we have the brains, and accordingly, we can contribute to the benefit of anybody in the world, to the humankind being in the world. So the priorities in Palestine is to, to enable people to develop them, their selves in terms of ICT, and accordingly, uh, official statements will be uh, obtained or will be offered by the, the Ministry of Telecommunication, and uh, this will be uh, in harmony with the ITU uh, regulations. So this is how we work. So public-private partnerships are very important to you, not just locally, but also globally as well. Definitely. Actually, we started locally, but now we care a lot for the uh, globally, and uh, the government is keen to work with the private sector, and the private sector would like to work with some other uh, partners outside Palestine. And actually, we have started that. In the past, people from outside Palestine, they did not think that they would be able to, to work with Palestinians from inside Palestine. But now, as time goes, and maybe because of using ICT, now we are 
introducing ourselves in an easier way. You don't have to be physically in anywhere else in the world in order to talk to them, in order to convince them that you can do this in a very good way. But now, using uh, this technology, uh, we can introduce ourselves, we can make uh, any sort of conferences or uh, interviews which enable the people from outside Palestine to know how Palestinians are thinking and uh, working. Accordingly, the PPP is well understood in Palestine and it is uh, well demanded and actually it is supported by the government, by the private sector, by the academia as well. As uh, you may already know, uh, I belong uh, to the academic section and uh, accordingly uh, in the academia we care a lot uh, uh, for the university, private sector part partnership, for the government private sector part partnership, or for the three of them, and now we are introducing this or making it, it a little bit uh, larger by having the partnership with uh, institutions outside Palestine as well. Because ICTs and education are uh, very much going hand in hand, aren't they? I mean, ICTs are very much enabling people to better themselves through education by getting access to education. Actually, sometimes it is one of the most important uh, uh, means that we may use in order to deliver the message of the uh, university, for example. You know, sometimes uh, it, it is because of any, uh, any limitations that students may not be able to go to the university or may, may, may not be able to handle an exam at a certain time, for example. So using the ICT, this will enable students to go for exams. It will enable them to, to study. It will enable the instructor to be in a direct contact with the students 24 hours, if you like, because he can uh, upload the material. The student can put a question anytime. So ICT in education is getting uh, very, very important nowadays. This does not mean we have to rely on it uh, as a whole, you know, because in education, you need the face-to-face. -face. This is extremely important. And actually, there are some uh, institutions and universities, they do not believe in uh, distance learning as a whole, but it could be part of the program or part of the course. So we really believe that uh, ICT can make a lot for the benefit of education in Palestine as well as uh, anywhere else. Do you think that ICTs are sufficiently recognized as key development catalysts? And I wanted to ask you as well, should ICTs be part of the future UN Sustainable Development Goals? And if so, why? Uh, well, uh, everybody can recognize that the ICT sector is developing a lot, you know? And actually, it is contributing a lot, again, for the benefit of humankind. You know, and this is a very key important for us. I mean, whatever we are doing is for the benefit of humankind, wherever he is. So ICT should be recognized in a better way if they show that they are qualified enough. It's not, it's not important that just to say that I am an ICT uh, company. Okay, you are an ICT company, but doing what? So you have to show that you have an important role to develop the community, to help the people in, in different aspects. And this be in return of, uh, could be in return of money, could be in return of recognition, could be in return of, you know, accreditation. So it's important that this ICT sector should play an important role to achieve the goals, the vision, the mission of the entire government or the entire society as a whole. Accordingly, it should be recognized. This sector should be recognized as far as it can show that it can contribute to the benefit or to achieving of the goals of the society, yes. And meanwhile, it can be even part of the international uh, body as a whole, yeah. Professor Anamusa, thank you very much indeed for your presence at the studio today and, uh, and thank you very much for your uh, very illuminating answers. Oh. It's my pleasure and thank you for hosting me in this uh, media. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you.